I've got big news this week that you probably were not going to hear about anywhere else. So here it is. From me, the most important, well, formerly most important person in America, and now Asia and the world. At least that was according to Fairtax.org. I've, um, Taiwan, systems of government. You're going to, you've probably heard a term, you're going to hear it more, called a premier. And what in the world is a premier? China and Taiwan's system of government is extremely similar. Technically, they believe they're the same government. They've, they forked off. It's a government. Their, their view is that one party controls the whole government. Um, and so the party has its rules. And the rules of the party play a much larger role in Eastern politics uh, than in the West. In the West, it's it's you know, multiple parties and one government. They have what's called a premier. And this is, for the most part, it's like a super secretary. Typically, the ministers, it's, it's like the head of the ministers. Now, a prime minister, such as Britain, is the head of state in some ways, uh, like a super secretary of state. Technically, the crown is the head of state in Britain, but the prime minister carries the mantle of that, so the crown can attend parties and fundraisers. Well, they don't need fundraisers. Don't attend fundraisers to give money to things. Stuff like that. Smile for the camera. and um, or, or, or go play soccer with the kids in Africa. Got gotta love Harry. But the prime minister functions as a head of state. But... A premier has basically the same seat of power, but is not the head of state. It's like a secretary, appointed, not elected. And that person has a lot of power because that person, the, the cabinet in these systems of government creates the legislation. And the legislature doesn't actually introduce or write the legislation like they do in America. The legislature only debates the legislation. Imagine the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Rights, Human Rights and Service, or whatever, the, the Secretary of Health, and imagine all those guys. Secretary of Treasury, they have a super secretary, and they get together and they vote on what legislation to introduce to Congress. That's how things work over in the East. And the, the head, the super secretary, the head, is called a premier and is not the head of state and is not elected. The premier of Taiwan has declared war on Microsoft. In their local currency, which is 30 cents to the dollar, one, uh, let's see, one U.S. penny is worth three Taiwan dollars, which, you know, you can, you can slice it eight ways or six, a pie is a pie. But they pay one billion, which imagine... I don't know what, what whatever one thirtieth of a billion is in U, is U.S. dollars, but one billion in Taiwan currency every year to Microsoft, and Taiwan's government has said there's no reason for this. We have open source documents. We don't need to use Microsoft Doc or DocX file or their other spreadsheets or databases. We can use the open source version of those LibreOffice or many others, OpenOffice, ODT. They can use Fedora. They they pay money. It's, it's paid managed Linux in a sense. There's, there's no reason that we need to be paying money to Microsoft for all these licenses and all this proprietary stuff. And so presidents and prime or, and premiers, excuse me, presidents and premiers in the past have tried to get rid of this. Now the president and the premier of Taiwan is saying, we're going to do it. And they're forcing colleges to at any government institution to stop and cease all use of Microsoft formats and completely get undependent from Microsoft proprietary licenses within two years. And that's what I understand. The, the details could vary a little bit, but they are serious and they're doing it. And it's creating a problem for professors and uh, especially upper class or um, uh, graduate school uh, students because they're having to convert all their documents, resumes, everything they're converting. Taiwan is seriously... Uh, angry at Microsoft and they're done 
and they want to take that money they were giving to Microsoft and give it to the United States military to buy military equipment so they can stand against China. Now, that, and I've said this before, and that's why I created verb.inc, I-N-K, what you write with, verb.inc. It's a web, like .com, but it's .inc. Verb, like the grammar, verb.inc. I created that in its YouTube channel, and I put it in Chinese because I knew that Taiwan needed to learn how to use and install Ubuntu. I knew it was coming. And now the government's serious. And when the government requires that their papers not use Microsoft, there's no reason for anyone else to. Taiwan is enormous. They've still, their air force is still about the same size as all of China's. This is a very powerful economy. And they're what stands between the United States and China. Uh, as well as Japan, but more Taiwan, because China's got all of its guns aimed at Taiwan, a lot of them anyway. If Taiwan switches over to Linux and away from Microsoft, that's going to set off an avalanche in the world. I wrote the guys at, at Canonical, the, the Ubuntu company. Um, Canonical is to Ubuntu what Microsoft is to Windows. And I wrote them about it and told them what's going on. And they're like, we hear this story all over. So I predicted it. I predicted it long ago. And that the, those videos on YouTube at the, at the Inc. is a verb, verb.inc YouTube channel have been there for that reason. Now, it's, it's coming. Here's the other big news. A lot of Linux developers, both Ubuntu and Arc Linux. Arc, is, Arc Linux is powerful and for geeks, so to speak. It's, it's, it's like driving a stick, a, a, a six-speed. Arc Linux is the six-speed transmission of Linuxes. And Ubuntu, Ubuntu is the, um, shall we say, smart shifting uh, version of Linux. They don't really have a normal automatic drive for Linux. That's Windows. These big Linux developers are completely, completely discontinuing support for 32-bit processors as of this month. They're no longer developing it. They're going to support it for a little while, but by 2018, you can no longer get updates for your 32-bit systems, except for only one long-term support uh, Ubuntu 16 long-term support is going to be maintained through 2018, but no more new stuff. They are jumping ship and that, that, cause everyone's had a 32 bit version and a 64 bit version of software, right? Okay. Android is Linux, dude. If software developers no longer have to write two versions of their apps for Linux, which includes WordPress. Linux runs the world and the web, no, whether you believe it or not. And soon it's going to run Taiwan instead of Windows. And with Linux developers, the big dogs, jumping ship on 32-bit processors, that means, listen closely, look at me. Software developers are no longer going to have to develop two versions of all their apps. They're going to only have to develop one. And that means that the development of software in the Linux world is about to really pick up the pace. And Microsoft and overrated Apple, now overrated Apple, are, they're going to be in trouble because the efficiency for Linux developers who run the web, most websites are on Linux, Android is Linux, and people are shifting to Linux for their home computing. This podcast uses pure Linux. Those Linux developers are about to almost double their programming efficiency. A lot of stuff is going to get half the size and take almost half the time. Not quite half. This is big news. And it's going to be changing from now till we get to 2018. <sighs> I need to get to the point. Whether brain or brawn, there are two worldviews about where strength comes from. Some believe strength is arbitrarily bestowed from above. We on Earth are mere objects of favor and misfortune. Those with more stole it from others in this grand zero-sum game called life. Only the poor understand wealth. Others believe strength comes from hard work and choosing battles wisely. Working people are strong in mind or body or both. Peaceful people don't deplete themselves of their energies and are fierce when roused to arms. Both have unfair advantages to exploit and hard choices to make. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.